I would say life balance is important because it's often the difference maker in terms of overall success or failure, but also generally how you feel along the way to success or failure. Because you can stress out on something or you get too excited about something else and like how to keep it even keel is really kind of the secret warrior kind of um, power, superpower, if you will. Alan, you work with a lot of student athletes who um, they have so many demands. They have practice. They've got their classes. How do you help them achieve sort of that life balance between all the different things pulling at them in life? Yeah, I don't want to take too much credit for that, but I, I get to work around a lot of people who help with that, right? Whether it's everything from a, an app that they have that keeps track of everything in terms of where they're supposed to be, practice, rehab, class, communication is happening through this, you know, these, these, the technology. Um, the students who may struggle or need a little bit of help have special learning, what we call learning specialists that come in and they sit down with them and they talk about, okay, what, do you, what is your week gonna be like? You have, you know, you have that test coming up on Thursday, but you also have that paper due on Tuesday and you're traveling to Notre Dame on Friday. Like, how do you, how do you put all that together and have folks sit down with them um, and lay it all out. Uh, as a student athlete, I recall back in the dark ages when I was one, uh, there's not a lot of free time. But, but isn't it so important to carve out that personal time? Because you're always going, 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 going. That can lead to burnout, stress, and no time for Alan, no time for Jack, no time for Paul. Absolutely, right. yeah. We gotta find that time. Right, and so one of the things that we do, and this has been great because there's legislation from, you know, starting at the NCAA and down into the Pac-12 conference, and particularly at USC, where we do what's called a time management plan. And in my job, I get to sit down with every head coach, all, you know, we have 21 sports at USC, and so I sit down with every head coach and one of their captains, um, and we talk about their schedule for the year, mm -hmm. right? And like, for example, a football coach will take the national championship game, which happens sometime around the first or second week of January, right? Mm -hmm. And then they work backwards from that day in January to August or, you know, when fall camp starts. And they plan out, because there's so many hours a week, there's like 20 hours a week that they're designated to allow to, to focus on football. Um, and then they have a block for when classes are, and they have all these other things like weight training or you know, rehab or community service. So what we do is we make sure that they, every student athlete understands what to expect and when so that they can predict when they're gonna have that private time. And so a coach can't say, oh, I, I remember a time we, we, got, we got, I went to the Pacific and we got killed at a game against Cal. 42 to nothing, and then we were watching film on Sunday afternoon, our coach got so mad at us, and he marched us out to the field, and we practiced like until, oh. like, <laughs> it seemed like midnight, right? And I remember that he, he's like, started waving his hands, he told us we were gonna run until he flies, right? So, <laughs> and so, you can't do that anymore, right? right. Like, this, uh, is the block, no. this is the block of time, and this is how much time you have. Um, and so we, not only do we have that time, but we also have to communicate it to them and tell them so they can say, oh, you know what, there's a three day weekend coming up and I can maybe go like home for the weekend or cause we have a buy or something like that. But so we're always protecting that, not only that time, but also their awareness of what, what's out there so that they can plan for um, taking care of themselves in addition to everything else that they have to keep up with. Yeah, you said something right off the top about um, having success because you have balance. I think there's a there's a uh, uh, it's kind of kind of counterintuitive because there's the whole workaholic thing, right? The more hours you put yeah. into something, you work. Yes. You know, entrepreneurs take pride in saying, "I work 16 hours a day. I work 18 hours a day." And yes. and how how is that not actually a path for success? Is to overdo it? Well, we just know that burnout is a thing, right? And we understand that like. Um, uh, I'll tell you a story about my experiences with uh, one of the um, administrators who I've worked with in athletics. And so one day we were having a conversation about this 20-hour window 
of that they are allowed is called CARA. So there's they, like oh, there's only so much time that a student athlete can be required to participate in their sport now, right? right? And so it's 20 hours a week during the, during the regular season, and in off season it's eight hours a week, right? And so we were talking about this, and anything else beyond that 20 is considered voluntary. Right, and a coach can't demand it. It can't. They actually can't even be there unless it's a safety issue or whatever. And it's a really kind of a delicate issue. And so we're having this conversation. And of course, I'm advocating for the students and making sure that it's their choice to go over the 20 hours. Right. right. He says, "Well, you know, Alan, it takes more than 20 hours to be great." Right. And to hear it from someone like a Paul McDonald, like, it's like, "Oh wow, that's you're right." You know. However. You got to clear. You got to create opportunity for um, people to take care of themselves because not everyone can work themselves to the bone and get that success. Um, so, trying to help folks help not only um, the student athletes but also coaches um, and others to um, understand that actually balance of hard work, flexibility. Right, um, and, and, and the ability to communicate about these things is actually more important to success than just burning the candle at, at both ends. Yeah, Paul, you went, you, you, know, you played at, at that level, you played in the NFL. How did you manage it? How did you manage having a life? You, you had a young family and you were, when you were playing in Cleveland. And so how do, you, how do you find time for your wife and your kids while you're navigating a, an NFL career? It's not, it's not that hard, actually, because, um, you know, there's training camp. So there are those times and places where it is 24-7. Right. It's 20, and there's nothing else. Right. You have right. time for nothing. Right. Um, and that happens with everybody yeah. in, in, in every cycle. But to your point, Alan, you can't continue at that pace for very long. 365 days a year. Yeah. Because right. if it, it would be burnout, you would ha- you'll have health issues, you'll have personal relationship issues, your marriage will fall apart if you're married, everything will fall apart, to your point of, of why balance leads to success. But there are those moments, and that's like we're really looking at a, you know, a one month long period of time for training yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. Um, but during the season, it's not that bad, you know, you have a day off, you know. Yeah, there's the stresses of performing and, and wanting to win and all that, and the pressures with that, but... You still have time um, to be yeah. with your family. I, I believe that, um, hey, you put your time in, you put your best foot forward, your best effort in, but if you continue to put pedal to the metal and you're sleeping in your office and you don't have any, you're not rested, you're, you're not operating at your optimal capacity, then you, you're, it's gonna go down from there. So you, you can't function like that. And um, you know, unfortunately, Jack, we live in a specialized world. You know, let's think about the doctor, the medical community. You know, you be, you get your MD, and then you become a specialist, then you get more of a specialist and more of a specialist. You get all these designations after you, and you become this like guru, and everybody comes to see you. You have no time. That that's your li- that's who you are. That's your life. That's your 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 uh, role in life is you are this specialist. But the world, I believe, rewards generalists better. Interesting. Financially, the specialist will make more money and maybe more acclaim and maybe more fame. The quality but of life. Quality of life. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Quality of life will yeah. suffer. And it's amazing too when you see someone who is a specialist who values the quality of life and actually can do some semblance of both or really, yeah, okay, maybe they have to do 80 hours a week, but that a 10 or whatever, they know how to shut down and yeah. protect that, that to me, that's well, brilliant. Cool. Yeah, I, I, and, and you look at the difference in cultures between, let's say, the European culture and the American culture, mm-hmm. well, they'll take three, four weeks off mm-hmm. yeah. every summer. And in, in the United States, if you tell somebody you're taking more than a week off, they look at you like you're some kind of a lazy bum, exactly. right? Yes. But that, so even for that specialist, if you were to take those four weeks in the summer, yeah. maybe that's when he gets to recharge it or she gets to recharge those batteries. Just one example. So you use the term, um, of the uh, Hall of Famer um, takes 20 hours to have greatness. Yeah, more than 20, more, more than, than 20. 20, yeah. In a week, yeah. Uh, yeah. In a week, yeah, yeah. right, right. right. Yeah. So the question is, do we want to be a great athlete or do we want to be a great human being? 
and what's more important. And that's what we're talking about with balance right. and creating perspective, yes. correct? Yes, I, and I think what I've been around, just some of the alumni like yourself from USC, meeting folks who have figured out how to go from being, all they wanted to do was be a great athlete and getting the opportunity to understand that that means more than just being a great athlete. And then those who over time go from like, okay, at in the college level, maybe get a professional uh, experience, maybe an Olympic experience, um, and then move into some other aspect like you, Paul, right? In terms of business and just life and understanding the ups and downs of all of that. I think that to me, that's true greatness to say, here's someone who was a top of their game athlete and they converted or translated that greatness into other aspects of life. Yeah. Right, it's a, it it sells the value of sports and what it can do for you, particularly if you have had opportunities like some of the folks at USC and and, and places like that have. It's just, it's beautiful. It's just amazing to just like know the power of like taking greatness and you know disseminating it elsewhere in life is I think is better than just being a champion. That's I, the key. Yeah. That, that's the key. I believe to. Uh, to sports and, yeah. and athletes in sports because Absolutely. because yes most people hang on to the past right because maybe it didn't go quite the way they wanted to or maybe it did go as well as they wanted to but and that's just, a, that was dick it's an addiction or something like yeah. like they're addicted now, to that you yes. cannot replicate right. the highs of, right. of sport and it's taken a lot of people down over the years it has and so for those people that understand what they've learned from their sport, the skills they've learned, the life skills, um, the experiences, and then to be able to translate them to other aspects of their life. That's the, you're, that you're right, that is the genius, Alan. And, and the other part of it that, I, that resonated with me with what you just said, Alan, was that athletes, because of their success, have a platform, right? And so that's why I, I'm a huge fan of a guy like LeBron James, because he uses his platform to empower other people. Uh, he created the I Promise Academy. Jalen Rose did the same thing in Michigan with an academy he started for local kids. And so having that purpose of taking what you did and the greatness that you achieved in one aspect and then being able to translate that and help other people, I think that's next level living. Yeah, it really is. And it's really cool to see young people more and more coming in with that. Like we have some guys and gals in, in our uh, teams right now who are thinking like that coming into the university. Right. Like and and it's and then sometimes you know we have programs we do community service they they spend a lot of time but the ones that are just like really understanding that like when I'm giving I'm getting and I'm and I'm putting that like during the pandemic during like some of the you know the racial uprising that happened in 2020 like many of our student athletes Anna Cockrell for example I mean here she is and you hear her story where she was struggling with mental health issues. And then the pandemic obviously didn't help that. And she quit training. She was not training for a while. Um, then she got involved and she started an organization at USC, um, Black Student Athlete Association, and was very Im involved and in, in integral to that, dealing with her own recovery from injury, from mental health issues that she was dealing with. And then she puts that all together and she's running in the Olympics right. a year and a half, two years later, right. right? And you know now she's a professional athlete, and you and you see her story, and you see wow. Or Michael Phelps, for example, right? Now you talk about using their platform. Not only are they just using their platform, but they're using it for like for him in terms of dealing with mental health issues and the things that he's been through, or Serena Williams and postpartum depression. It's like to me, that's yes, that is the the power of sport to see. Folks, maybe they don't like, maybe they have dreams or they think about, oh, this is how I'm going to put it all together. But to stumble through what they're working on and trying to figure it all out and it falls into place in that way, it's just so, it just, I mean, I can't say enough about how impactful it is to everyone around them, right? And people who they, you know, lives that they touch. So that's a really great example because, in some ways, while she was out there doing things to heal others, it helped her heal herself. Oh, absolutely. And she yeah. talks about they they yeah. talk about that. You know, I mean, Serena Williams. That the things that she went through um, is like, mentoring and supporting Naomi Osaka, right? Like right. Osaka, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. And yeah, there's this image of them when she's crying and she's got her arm around her, and she's like, "I know what she's been through," and to to know that what I was going through 
is at a place where it's now benefiting others is like the journey was almost worth it or was worth it. There's, there's a quote um, in a chapter in the book uh, that I'd like to, to say, mm -hmm. um, our greatest work or our greatest gift mm -hmm. is that which we wish had been offered to us when we were in our deepest pain. That's right, I love that, absolutely. Hey Paul. Yeah. This is the part where we're supposed to tell people to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, will you please do that then? I mean, yeah. if you enjoy it, yeah, please do. And if you don't, do it anyways, because we need your help. Yeah, we do. <laughs> also, we have a website called GameChangeNation.com. Just go there and subscribe and you'll get tons of free content. And what we're really trying to do is create a community of people that love sports. Yep and the great lessons that we learn from sports, but we wanna hear from you. We do, so we're gonna have a bunch of social media pages from TikTok to Instagram to Twitter to Facebook, Instagram, I probably already said all of them. Please join them and tell us your stories. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, and we wrote a book. Oh, forgot, forgot about that. Forgot that. The book is called Through the Tunnel. It's available on Amazon now. If you go straight down here to this link that you can see below us, you will be able to purchase it. We'd love it if you could do it. Thank you very much. Thanks guys.